Welcome back to the Social Distance Podcast. It's nice to have George back on the show today. Uh, and once again, the show is brought to you by our friends over at NordVPN, isn't it, Jonesy? That's right, mate. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash social distance and they're still giving you four months free. Uh, and we don't need to explain the benefits of having a VPN. You can log into anywhere in the world, protect your uh, online data, and uh, yeah, you can get commentary from wherever you want. That's Great any time. during the Olympics. Great time while the Olympics is on to tune in if you want to, you know what it's like watching the Olympics. If you're watching it in Spain, you're watching Spanish athletes. If you're in France, you're watching French athletes. But if you're an Aussie or a Kiwi or a Brit or wherever you are in the world and you're you're not at home, you can tune into your own nation's coverage and follow your own athletes. So it's a good time to get on to the NordVPN bandwagon, I'd say. Absolutely. Big show. Great. Like, share, subscribe, everyone. Thanks. Let's, let's just run the intro and wing it like we always do and see what comes out of it. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Mm. Front kick. Just getting bored in the chat. My radar's going pretty hard at the moment, I think we should... Will you Who shut up, man? Person? That escalated quickly. Oh, We're going to need to get some more qualified guests on the show, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked me the other day, they said, it is, does George really... Can't, can you can he really not be fucked with the show? Or is it like just like a image that he's created that a lot of people are behind? I said no, he he really can't be fucked. <laughs> yeah, now George oh, is the kind of character. He's back though. A couple of false starts, but we've got the engine running. It's blowing you know what smoke. So you just, I just like sometimes you just got to go to ground. Like yeah. things don't go your way, and you've fucked off, and like you'd be better to go to ground because. Otherwise, you're on a platform on the internet talking to however many people, and that lives there forever. Mm. And you go, you're pissed off because something's happened. For example, maybe you didn't get something to the Tour de France, mm. as an example, <laughs> hypothetically. Not saying that's what... <laughs> no, I'm not saying that made me angry. No, that's not what it is, for sure not. I'm not saying I got upset about that. No. Nah. And then and you just come on a podcast and do a couple of character assassinations, a couple of drive bys on people that you didn't need to. Mm. Yeah. No, but the, the, the and best also thing we, was you we did... sell we sell the social distance podcast as a safe haven for us three, but the reality is it's not. <laughs> just lives out there forever. I think about this a lot. Like when I hear that intro and we're talking about like uh, radar's going harder, and I go, What what were we talking about? That your radar was going off. That's mm. out there. For, if you know anyone ever goes back and listens to like why do you, why do we why do you why do we put ourselves in a compromising and, position all the time? But how bad was it if my radar was going off, considering how much shit we let slip through? <laughs> Probably that time we got the lawsuit. But I, I like the build up for the Tour de France. We're talking about your training camps, it's building up, building up, building up. Then you don't get selected. And we just don't mention it. <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> and then George doesn't come on the show for like two months, and it's just like, oh, it'll just go away. Don't worry, people won't even know. Did you do, it. Did you do pods? Yeah, yeah, we did two. We did two or three. We never, we never once mentioned it. We never mentioned you at all. It's like you didn't <laughs> exist, did. other than uh, we've got a new guest filling in for George, and we just soldiered on. And we didn't even say that. We just said we just it started the show like normal with like Scott <laughs> okay. McGorry or Durbo or, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I, think, I think we've got anyway, a system down back. pat. Yeah, it's good to have you back. Yeah. Wow. It's been a bit of a um. I'm doing a stupid thing at the moment. I, the, the, this is cycling right now. This is why the sport's now ruined. I own two houses in Andorra. Must be nice and all that. Yeah, I get it. But one of, them, <laughs> one of them's a little ship box at 2,000 metres, and one of them's a nice house at 1,750 metres. Both what I would consider altitude. Back in the day, I used to go to altitude camps in Boulder at 1,600 metres. So what I would consider altitude... And you know what I'm doing? Every night, I brush my teeth. And then I go, oh, well, let's go do the altitude. And I get in the car and I drive to the top of the country and sleep in a hotel. So I'm paying for this hotel. I'm sleeping in a hotel at two and a half thousand meters because it's a little bit higher. Mm. And then like on top of that, there's like days like it's the best weather I've ever seen here. I've never had weather like this. And then instead of doing five hours, go do four hours, but then spend the last hour on the home trainer with a winter jacket on, sweating. As, you know, like all these little things now, I'm just like, the sport's gone. It's it's the, But it's the epitome of how 
like sport in general or cycling, at least cycling over the last five years, always that discussion like why has racing changed? How why has racing got faster? You know, all of that stuff. And we spoke about it on the show a few weeks ago when you weren't here about the the changing of nutrition and we went deep into that with Durbo and how the increase of carbohydrates per hour and all that stuff. Oh, sounds like a good like, episode. Yes, <laughs> yes. River, fucking riven team. How are the numbers um, on that one? <laughs> have we, we ever recovered from that? Fuck oh, me. Nutrition hell. chat. Awesome. Haven't been, haven't been hungry since. But then it's like you go into the – but everyone's like, you know, like you've got a place you can set at 2,000 metres, but everyone's like, oh, a little bit higher is a little bit better. And yeah. another, another example of it, was on the time trial on on um, a few days ago in the in the men's time trial the Olympics. Well, when asked, well, when up riding double disc wheel, yeah, you know, like it's, like, it's like that's it's just like the thought. It's just the, an insight into everybody's minds at the moment in cycling is what can I do that's like mm. out there that's different that can make me go faster, you know? And like mm. you would never expected him to ride a double disc wheel, but he did. Not in the pissing <laughs> rain and yeah. Fucking storm in Paris, yeah. But yeah, it was it was it was it was that much quicker for him. He said, and I guess in the rain it doesn't really make a difference. What I mean, it's oh, the right. handling, the handling, the handling, yeah, the handling so much worse. The handling yeah. was so much worse. I've never ridden a double. I've never ridden a track bike. But you, you, when you pursue, you have a double disc, don't you? Yeah, and even that though, like man, like I remember in, in track races in the past, team pursuits in the past. We we're even riding a double disc indoors if the air conditioning was on or somebody opened a door or like just <laughs> someone opens the door and just yeets the team off the track. Oh, they used to fucking do, mate. The, 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 without naming any names, there was a certain British country, um, Great Britain, that used to. Some said it was a great country in Britain. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure when you raced te- team pursuits at Manchester, there was a reason why the the temperature dropped about five degrees. With, when uh, the Brits were out there, and you could feel the breeze coming in from the two doors at each end of the track open. Oh, because it created like a yeah, and it dropped well, the pressure inside. And... Didn't um, didn't uh, maybe Alex Dowsett or uh, maybe it was Wigo, one of one of the British guys when they broke the hour record, they went out straight after a, like a scratch race. They put a scratch race on first, and yeah. it got like a current going in the right direction of the vel- of the. The velodrome. Yeah, man, been, if, yeah. if you sit in, if you sit in the stands while there's a bunch race on, like a Madison or something, you feel the wind every time the bunch comes past. Right. It's like when you get in a swimming pool, you know, and make that whirlpool. Mm. I don't know how long. I don't know if it lasts long enough. Yeah, I was going to say, how long's that? How long's that whirl, wind swelling around for? Yeah, I don't know. But if you not just had air conditioners, like you're saying, if you had an air conditioner, okay, this is not great for visual listeners. Well, I'm holding my hands up. If you non visual listeners. If you had a air conditioning blowing on the right hand side of the track going that way and then yeah. air conditioning, you would create a In theory, yeah, you could create a tailwind down down both straight. Yeah. Yeah. But don't the UCI lock down conditions and stuff? Don't they have people going, Hey, shut the doors, air no, I'm more worried about um people race. not kissing their wives in time trials or something. Oh mm. uh, yeah, that's fair enough. But most track a lot of tracks have air conditioning in them because it's obviously well, it makes sense if you if you slam three thousand people into a sardine can and you haven't got air conditioning, then you got you got another another issue. But in yeah. Beijing, the Beijing Olympics was when the the air conditioning vents were quite low and they faced they all faced inward towards the the centre of the track, so it was like crosswind down the straights. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And the the Australians, the Australians actually, who we rode off against for bronze, rode. Um, they didn't ride a front disc. They rode a five spoke. Soft. And who won? Oh, we fuck. We smoked them. Yeah, yeah. But they're, yeah, they're, so to my point, yeah, big balls on Van Art. Love it. Mm. Yeah. What, big balls on Grace, Grace Brown too. Oh, that was impressive, man. Oh yeah, smoked them. I mean, How do you win by a minute four? Like that's here's a here's a strange take on the games, right? This is gonna actually a lot of people are gonna hate this, but. Why not put it out? Why not? Why don't I put it on the internet and leave it there forever? It's a safe haven. Go safe ahead. haven. I was thinking about this the other day. Growing up, I thought the games. I was told in New Zealand at least that the games is the most like the pinnacle of sport. That's what you believe that the Olympic Games is the pinnacle of sport. And when I went there the first time, 
And the second time. The second time, not as much. I wasn't as, I went in the village a bit, but like not as much. But what I realized was like, <clears throat> it's massively not. It's because cycling is one of what, six, what, what sports would you say are truly like, like professional, professional in terms of like have the resources to be the most professional. I mean, there's tennis, obviously, like the best in the and basketball. Like, uh, yeah, but not not for a long time. Basket and basketball for a while, they just they gave it the ass card until Jordan wanted to win, isn't that right? Didn't he want no, to come? Yeah, yeah. The, the, Olymp- the Olympics, <laughs> the Olympics in general was amateur until 1992. I think, yeah, in Barcelona. So like, even as a cyclist, you couldn't go if you were a professional. Mm. Um, so. I, I think they need to, like, what 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 is strange for me is like it's a pinnacle of sport and it is, and in some regards, except like, I'm when I was there doing cycling, I went, this is not the pinnacle of cycling because most a lot of really good riders aren't here. It's not we don't have the high performance environment that we would normally have, you know, with the buses with all the. I mean, they try to replicate it. New Zealand team do a really good job of trying to influence it, but it's not. It's not, and and there's so many people there that are like, so many of these sports are like, they have to get it's government grants or it's a lot of them work as a school teacher or you know Valerie, it's like, it's a lot of the most professional sports that say all the biggest paid you know whatever F one or or whatever aren't actually the Olympics, so it is no. it is the pinnacle of a lot of sports, but it's not, it definitely didn't feel like the pinnacle of cycling when I was there. No, and, but because the Olympics, the Olympics was traditionally in the amateur games, mm-hmm. and and I, I, I guess that partly existed because professional sport didn't really exist until, you know, with the exception of like franchise basketball and things like that. Like on a global sport, professional sport didn't really exist anyway, mm-hmm. um, for until not that long ago. You know, like maybe the eighties or something. Like rugby didn't go professional until the until the nineties. Um, you know, lots of sports didn't go professional until later on, but the and you're and you're so you're right that they're like the only true professional sports in the, in the in the in the word of professional is like cycling, tennis, basketball, um, not even football at the Olympics. Like football's got some what footballs that you got to be under twenty three, and then you allow yeah. one pro that's not first division or something. Yeah, but. But I still would say that it's still the pinnacle of sport and it's still the best sports people on the planet because those sports themselves aren't professional. There's no professional necessarily, and there's no professional yeah, swimming there's league. No higher place they're they're to go, yeah. still the best swimmers. You know, there's no one else, there's no one on the planet who can swim faster than Michael Phelps did. You know, yeah. no one on the planet, regardless of whether you made a fucking dollar or a million dollars. There was no there's no professional swimming league. But don't you think there's a little weird in between where they need to go, all right, let's let's lean one of these two ways and go like No, because like then I think you run the risk of not having the best sports people at the Olympics. Because then yeah. if you because because it's just the nature of the beast that like, you know, if you're the Olympic shot put champion from New Zealand, you're not making you're not playing professional shot put. You're doing some events around the world, the Golden League where you make some prize money and things like that, but you're not you, your only source of income for us from a sporting perspective, removing commercial sponsors and stuff from a port, sporting perspective, is a government funding from New Zealand, and it might be sixty grand for being yeah. an Olympic champion. So that's that's sort of the, the peak or the cap of being a professional sports person in in an event like that. But if you were to say like, let's make it only amateur, like it used to be, then you yeah. then you don't have the best bike riders, you don't have the best basketball players, you don't have the best tennis players. But, but you don't still- lose much. You don't lose much. And I feel like you might gain like cycling like used to be you used to be able to go there if you didn't have a it's like boxing is still. Boxing, mm-hmm. you're allowed to box at the Olympics if you don't have a professional ticket. Is yeah, that right? amateur, yeah. Yeah. Lots and of would it, still are, yeah. Would it be better if you had Anthony Joseph? At the Olympics. Uh, what's his name? The YouTuber fuckwit? Um, Logan Paul. Paul. Logan Paul. Or something. Mm. Him and Mike Tyson are fighting. Jake Paul are fighting soon. Jake no? Paul. Mike Tyson uh, and him are fighting soon. They, they, should have done it. they should have done that at the Olympics. Yeah. That would have been good. Yeah, I don't, I, do you know, do, yeah, I know. I, I agree. I think I agree with you, actually. But it is like... Like, I, 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 I just feel you're sold this thing and then... 
if you went to walk around a F1 pit or a, mm. you know, the Barcelona, but I guess I could say ultimately it's just money, isn't it? It's like yeah, when these people have resources to do it. You, you're right that the Olympics, the, the Olympics largely is an amateur games. It is, mm. it is. But I still think that that doesn't necess- that doesn't that doesn't completely align with not having the best athletes in the world. It's still yeah, the pinnacle yeah, yeah, of yeah. athletes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Two different things. You know what I mean? It's just the nature of the beast of those sports. I'm looking at it massively through the lens of cycling and being like looking at that start list on the Olympics and being like, okay, good start list, but way harder to win pretty much any other world tour event. Yeah, I agree. Didn't but the same, did, it's the same can be said for the worlds because you can only take so many people from your, worlds is different. Nah, worlds is different. Worlds, no, is, world. a, worlds is a deep field because you can yeah. have eight eight rider teams, but yeah. still, you could argue that like even if the eight Belgian get selected, the ninth Belgian is still better than the first Kiwi. Mm. But I look know? at Czech Tour, the smallest race there is, the smallest uh, ranked race, and it's won by. Mark Hershey yesterday. Mm. Now, if Mark Hershey is at the Olympics, he would be a massive medal contender the way he's riding. But he's not even at the Olympics because he went, Swiss wanted to do TT guys, I guess. Mm. We took two TT riders and we didn't have space for a, a road rider. So we're just going to see how the TT riders go in the road race. Yeah, but I think I think what you, the point you're saying before, I, I reckon the Olympic Games would really suffer if they didn't have – some professional elements, like particularly, you know, basketball. And what was weird, I, I wasn't a big rap for the opening ceremony. It was obviously mm. different. They took a punt. Didn't help that it pissed rain. It was classic French, you know, when they had that. What were they trying to replicate? The Last Supper with drag queens or something? But were they? Or was that just, is that just. What? Yeah, I've seen that. I didn't that, watch I... ceremony. What? No. What? They did, they did like a Jesus Christ number. The disciples came out. Yeah, the, the Da Vinci's painting, The Last Supper, right. it was sort of recreated. And then a guy in the background had his right nut popping out of his outfit. Did you see that, Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't just a little bit of hair and a bit of round. It was the full nut out full of his spandex. Right yeah, and there's no way that that nut just popped out. Like he's pulled it no. out. No, no. He knew he's what he was touched. doing. He sabotaged the whole ceremony. Yeah. He so told all his mates, yeah. like, I'll watch this old flopping nut out mid-ceremony. And then they That's said, it. you won't, Francois. You won't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Pierre. Yeah. yeah. This is- <laughs> but do you, I don't know about that last supper thing, if, if that was actually what they were doing or whether it was just that it looked similar, so somebody on the internet's like plugged Come it on, off mate. and created some. But what was I, the situation with Snoop Dogg? Was he using a flame to light like a was – that the, was that the idea with the Snoop Dogg? Like he had a flame to light a massive joint? Like the big lighter ambassador, Snoop Dogg oh, gets a torch. That. Well, didn't Snoop Dogg have a torch at one stage? Oh, before the ceremony, like during the day, like when it was coming into Paris. But the idea <laughs> was like it was to do with like him smoking weed, no? But 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 don't they normally have uh-huh. like classic people from that country in the last chain? Like what was Rafael Nadal? I know he's won the French Open, but it's almost like they've gone through yeah. the list of famous French people and they go, ooh, we're a bit skinny here and then they thought I just fucking bring everyone in no but I think Nadal and Serena Williams kind of resonate with Paris no because of that yeah but they're not French so I thought the tradition was yeah well Nadal is isn't he oh Nadal yeah yeah oh I thought he was injured oh man there you go anyway it was different but uh, yeah interesting feedback it was it was it was a a, an out there opening ceremony there's no doubt about it and there was definitely parts of it that I thought not really not really for me um, but then but do you sit down <laughs> did both of you sit down and watch the opening ceremony yeah no, I just watch the highlights I watched the highlights uh, what am I missing like do, do, passion like... passion um, uh, yeah. uh, maybe vive, vive la, what is it vive la jus of some shit. Oh, a little bit of je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, just watching some, like, I, I would have watched it in hindsight knowing now I know that Aaron Gate was our flag bearer, so definitely 
went back and found that. But how did you not know that before? Because I don't. How would I know that? I don't use social media. (laughs) I don't know. The friendship circle. No, (laughs) George says he unplugs. He unplugs. They announced a day before or two days before. Yeah. And Caitlin told me. She goes, oh, Aaron was the flag bearer. And I went, oh, wow. Yeah. But even that flag bearer, and like it, the traditional, you know, you walk into a stadium, you get your moment, the camera zooms in on you. Mm. Instead, this year, they're stuck at the front of a like an old ferry getting pissed yeah. on and you got yeah. everyone huddling around you. Like It, it was almost like a battle <laughs> to hold the catch of the flag. <laughs> Do you like a, a bunch of blokes and boats? I don't know. It's just if there was a race, if they raced those boats down the CN, I'd be into it. Like, right, who's going to get there first? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just what, just a parade, like parades in general. Like, like when I was a kid, we used to do this thing for school when I was like a five year old, and it was like called the mask parade, and you'd spend all. All, uh, like, I guess it would be a couple of weeks before it, the arts and crafts section of the seven, maybe I was seven or eight or whatever, and you'd, you'd make these paper mache masks. Mm. And, like, and you're working on them for weeks, uh, and then you you get to go to this thing on a Friday night in Trafalgar Square, and, they, and they, you paint up your masks like a devil or something, and then you're in the, in this mask parade and a bunch of people walking down there. No wonder my parents didn't come. I wouldn't have come. Like, what the fuck are you? Bunch of people walking down a road with some shit, you know what I mean? Like it, 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 it's it's hard to like not like I think the overwhelming um, feedback on the opening ceremony was like eh, risky, you know. Mm. Um, and so I, I I don't want to play the devil's advocate too much because it was there was definitely points in that ceremony like when that fucking Smurf came out, whatever I don't know what he was trying to achieve, but it was interesting for the Olympic Games. This fucking Smurf lying on a bridge with the Fucking four leaf clover over his cock and cock and bees. I was like, okay, what the fuck's going on here? But <laughs> imagine all the old farts, the old traditionalists that saddled up with their Yorkshire tea, a couple of Scotch fingers. Oh, mate, there would have been some traditionalists out there. Just, I said to I said to Hannah, fuck, Zeus will be turning in his grave watching this shit. Eh? Oh yeah. But, but, but get to the what I'm trying to say. I liked it because it was I didn't like it. And the last, the, the the final, I like. I just love the Olympics as well. I'm massive, massive Olympic. Olympic so, yeah. So I watch the opening ceremonies. I always try to watch them because I'm interested. And in, but for me, what the reason I watched it? There's two reasons I watched it. One, I wanted to see Gady, of course. Um, and two, like every Olympic ceremony, I like to watch the, the the opening of the games, like when they light the cauldron. I like to see how they do it. I like to see who does it. So like that's what I sort of I sit through the punishing smurf and and um cock and balls hanging out in the at the last supper or whatever they were trying to replicate there i sit through all that kind of stuff because I've, i'm i am interested to see how they like the you that's you know? like you you strike me as the kind of person that would watch the tour de france because you like it when the people make cycles with the hay bales and the tractors <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah i watch it for the castles but the yeah. uh, um for that guy giving but his anyway, the last hour, anyway. the last hour of the opening ceremony, I thought was pretty cool. Once they got to the Eiffel Tower, then like then I then I felt like I was watching an Olympic opening ceremony with the horse coming down the river. Um, although I mean, that, that that horse probably didn't need, didn't need to do the whole six k. They probably could have started that like a k yeah. out. <laughs> Just to yeah, say they charge them down the shops. <laughs> no, down the Seine. Oh. oh, yeah. A real horse went down the Seine. Yeah, yeah. It was impressive how they pulled that off. Yeah, wow. they just ran this like wooden beam the whole six k down the sand, and it just ran on the beam and didn't fall in. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. impressive. No, it's, it's a fucking electronic horse on a computer generated thing. Oh, or like whatever. I don't know. I was on a, no, I was on a catamaran getting towed by a boat. I think. Um, yeah. but but it was kind of cool. And then the then the like oh everyone was thought they were going to light the cauldron at the Eiffel Tower. Then Nadal was in a Zidane came out with the torch and handed it to Nadal and Nadal. He'd Nadal and then Nadal yeah. got on a boat and then they were like, Where the fuck's he going now? You know, and then and it was yeah. I think it was cool. And the, the cauldron itself was cool when it when it like went up in the air like a hot air balloon. Yeah. Um but yeah, the first three hours, 40 minutes was pretty painful. The best one was cool. Barcelona by a smile with the archer. Yeah, yeah. Like For sure. Cause cause you're thinking, geez, the pressure on that archer. He had one shot. Get- 
Yeah, if he didn't get that right, it could have been disaster. And it, like, was it was a decent shot too. Like, it wasn't. Was he no. that was competing in the archery? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What are your What are your five? Like, what if you had to put together like your sports? the Olympic sports where you could have the most unsuspecting Olympic gold medalists. For me, it's like, like, like a guy you meet at the pub and it turns out he's a gold medalist. For me, it's like the shooters, the yep. archers. Yep. Um, oh, Winter Olympics, I'm getting into curlers. Fencing, maybe? Nah, fencers are, are athletic. Yeah. And that, that, nah, fencers, I reckon you'd, you'd have a bit about them. You'd be a real... You, you wouldn't you wouldn't be unassuming and be a be a fencer. No, nah. true. Shot put quite tall. Oh, I know a good shot putter, and and, and they they that big that that they look like an athlete. Mm. Mm. They don't look athletic. <laughs> yeah, I'm picking your shot putter. You know, he's not at the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Ham, oh, hammer, throw? hammer throw. That's not the Olympics, is it? Yeah. Well, why do we? Why New Zealand's a sport of throwing shit? Like we I love jump, it. Some tall streak of weasel piss jumping over a pole. You wouldn't expect him necessarily. Like, oh, he's a basketball player or something, or like a, mm. or just a tall prick. I just like the idea of the New Zealand shooter that's just been smacking rabbits on the farm, and then he goes to the Olympics, and it's just all too much. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't, you can't handle the spectacle. I'll tell you who's impressive. This is another conversation and that, and that they were having on the commentary yesterday when I was watching the gymnastics and Simone Biles was obviously competing. It was qualification, but she was back competing after her, you know, after she, in Tokyo, she had the, she withdrew from mental health illness, uh, mental health problems at the Olympics and withdrew all of, out of all of her events. So she's come back now to, and um to Paris and like, She's she's in, she's insane. There's like yeah. no doubt about it that she's absolutely insane. And the commentators were talking, saying that they believe that she is the the the. I can't remember what the, how they how they phrased it, but like so to paraphrase was like the the best athlete at the Olympic Games this year on all sports. Like the most I would say a gymnast gets that medal. I would say a gymnast yeah. gets that every time. If you give them any in terms of give them any any given task. If you had to score, okay, say there's a competition where you had to do every Olympic sport and you get a score across every sport. Mm. I'd say Difficulty, the gymnast fitness. Yeah, but like, yeah, say I, you have to, how many sports at the Olympics? 50? No, more, more than that. Yeah. 300? 300 sports? No. Yeah. Yeah, it was swimming's got fucking 50. Okay, that's swimming. <laughs> <laughs> but, they're all a sport. Yeah. Oh, fuck. We're splitting hairs here. Okay, let's say <laughs> let's say they, you know, sitting down on a bike, just jumping over something. You know, a yeah, gymnast yeah. wins every time uh, across the board. Yeah, it's the best combined score. I agree. Mm. But but uh, there's 40 different sports, 40 individual sports. There you go, Georgie. We're oh, yeah. close. Yeah, um, the, 300. The, Fuck me. <laughs> about seven weeks of the Olympics. So I agree that Simone Biles is like an indie gymnast in general is just like the strongest, fittest, like impressive what they can do. And she is probably she's but she's not the most de- decorated Olympic athlete at the games currently. She's probably the world's most famous in some senses. Um so I de- definitely don't disagree with her. But what about somebody like Kip Chogi, for example? Who's coming back to try to win his third or fourth Olympic marathon, mm. and and he's he wears a pair of shoes, a singlet, and a pair of shorts, and he runs forty two point five kilometers faster than anybody on the planet. Like that, mm. surely in in terms of Olympic sports and faster, fitter, stronger, higher, all that 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 the, the Olympic marathon champion over the course of more than a decade must be up there. Has to be. Or do you take the do you take the hundred meters the other end of the spectrum? I like the uh, idea. They of don't have they don't have sprinters. they don't have like there's no like hundred meter sprinter who's there's no bolt anymore. Like that Italian guy won last time, and who's going to win this year? No one really knows. Like they are at the time, but they're not. They haven't got the pedigree like of Simone Biles or of yeah. Chogi or of I mean, there's probably some fucking rower out there at his twelfth games as well winning. 
Yeah, I mean, but, that's just, yeah. but it's fascinating how sports like swimming. No one gives a shit about swimming for three years and mm. eleven and a half months. Yet these two weeks, like everyone's into the swimming. Like and it, that goes it just, back to the Olympics being the pinnacle sporting event. Like we we're talking about the start of the show. Yeah, in some ways. But but that's that's kind of my point. It's also kind of my point. Like we've made it the we've made it the. Because it's the Olympics, we then go, oh, this is now the pinnacle. But for three and a half years, mm. it's just a bunch of blokes getting wet. Well, you're talking about unassuming athletes. Wait until they bring esports into the Olympics. Isn't that coming into the next one? <laughs> no, it's oh, not. Yeah. You'll just it's have not. gamers. Yeah, yeah. That, that's an, another thing. So I like this Olympic chat. So obviously the Olympics has progressed a lot since it started pre, pre-modern Olympiad whenever that was, 120 years oh, ago. Oh, mate, and I heard about some of the events in 1900. In 1900, there was a hot air balloon race. and oh, there was the, architecture, architecture. Yeah, and the guy flew 1,400K and ended up in Poland. When he landed, he got arrested because <laughs> he didn't have it, like the paperwork to go into international areas. And then when he went into the, uh, the jailhouse, he was there with his missus. He's pulling out the French champagne because they had won gold. So getting on it with the cops. Wait, wait, wait. How does this work? They send a bunch of balloons up and they go, who, who can go the furthest? furthest? That's it. <laughs> and that's it. Off they go. Everyone's got a tailwind and whoever runs out of gas, you're out. Yeah. Okay, no. um, architecture. Yeah, that's how, oh, architecture, that's how the um, San, uh, Familia Sagrada was built, eh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess because it's, because it's Greek, you know, so architecture was probably a massive – you know, like pre-modern Olympiad, like mm. it was, it was quite an important piece of the thing. But I like, think the, the pre-modern, the, the the Olympiad was based around people getting dragged behind chariots on horse and yeah, and not spears. wearing clothes, and it was just yeah. men, men only, and they used to wrestle naked and and yeah, yeah. orgies and spears. And, and, and the, the other nugget I Come heard from thinking about the opening ceremony kind of suits that. <laughs> yeah. the, the other nugget I heard from nineteen hundred is people entered this bike race thinking it was just a bike race in France and won it. And there's a female from America who won it, didn't even know it was part of the Olympics, and turns out she was the first ever female gold medalist from America, and they didn't find out for 52 years when they went through the records. And they went back over and they said, you know that was uh, the Olympics? She's like, what? Yeah. So it was the dog's breakfast in the Paris 1900. Do you know what's crazy is the sports that aren't in the Olympics, like um, massive, like, okay, obviously again, biased for me, downhill mountain biking. Like, why is cross country in there? Downhill was arguably like, oh, yeah, good I, I reckon, yeah. do you know what? Do you know what I reckon it is a little bit as, as and this is me just making, making shit up, but like, traditionally the Olympics is always about like, you know, that what's, what's the Olympic motto? Like, faster, fitter, stronger, higher, or, you know, yeah. something of that nature. And, so, so the Olympics was always based around sports that that do that. So maybe cross country mountain biking ticked more of those boxes than downhill mountain biking did, which arguably is not true. But anyway, maybe they viewed it that way. But then the Olympics now has transitioned into like, how the fuck are we going to get more people to watch this on TV? Yeah. yeah. So cricket's coming in, for example, because the Indian yeah, audience yeah. of of yeah. one billion people they know that like the bums on seats for that's going to be insane. Skateboarding, surfing, rock climbing. All of these things. So now, now you could argue downhill mountain biking would probably put more bums on seats than the cross country mountain biking. Yeah. The the second argument is like, oh, well, fuck, there's not always a hill where they have the Olympics. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, but there's not always an ocean yeah, or true. a lake. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Or a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I mean, that's surfing in Tahiti. So yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the what was the other one that blew my mind that, that they weren't even in Paris? Like, oh, even like the sevens. Some of the sevens was in like, why would that not all be in Paris? No, well, I think it was all in one stadium, uh, made to, side to France. I know what, um, but I want to just uh, the Olympics is about athletes, human, the human, the, the physical capabilities and I guess mental capabilities of a human athlete. So, how does equestrian fall in there? Like, it's about a horse, <laughs> it's a horse and, based sport. <laughs> and if you've got the money, you can buy a seven million dollar horse and guarantee. Getting a medal, just stay well, on. You hear about this yeah. lady? I can the, hang on to the thing and let it go. Eh? The, it. The, the big medal favorite. The oh, it's not. It's not trackside. It's not like 
it's not like jockeys hooning around a course. Yeah. And just, it's but the cross country is a bit like that, I guess. I actually like think that. it would be more exciting if they fucked off the equestrian and they pour in track, and bought in TAB trackside with a jockey. Because mm. then at least like your gambling addicts amongst us can get among, you know what I mean? And just get the bring the bookies in. It's a brilliant idea as if it's, if the countries brought their own horse, their own jockeys, yeah. and had like races that accumulated points. It'd be oh, like unreal. a round robin. Or they should like, like, yeah. They should yeah. line up like some of those handicap races, like a, a horse versus a runner versus a cyclist. Oh yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> and like see, re- let's like let's find out who is the best athlete. Is it the horse? Or is it the, the runner or the cyclist? <laughs> you and could even yeah. someone maybe rowing next to them. Like you could yeah. line them all up and just. We do a should do a race. um. Yeah, one we should do a country. Like Thirty nine other sports off and just have one handicap race. Yeah, and it's country yeah. versus country, A to B, and you have to go a section in a boat, sitting down, going backwards, a section. On a bike time trial, section on a horse, section yeah. running far, and then a tra- tra- I was just to say the other spot I wanted to see trail running in because I want to see my girlfriend. What about the Olympics. yeah? But I, I I would advocate for trail running being in the Olympics. Yeah, uh, I think it will of, be eventually. Because definitely in front of some other sports. Oh, so many people are trail running now, aren't they? Yeah. Like like that's now becoming like what cycling was a while ago. But it also it ticks the boxes of the of the traditional reasons of Olympics. Mm. Faster for the, it ticks all those boxes. And, and it like, would go good in a relay. Yeah. What about orienteering? That'd be good. <sighs> like the amazing race. Because that that's got to combine physical physical capabilities with wits, you know? Mm. Yeah. What about, well, it, the way it's all heading, if it's all on popularity and, and what's considered a sport, in 20 years' time, that, you know, the UFC, are they expanding mm. to just face slapping? Oh, yeah. That's, As opposed that's, to what? Well, like, that, they'll just bring it in if it's got enough eyeballs. Yeah. Imagine having two countries that you know hate each other just in an old-fashioned face slap. Mm. Oh, wait, 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 sorry, I'm missing it. Are you talking about not UFC? Are you talking about the sport no. where there's two people stand there, they're holding yes. on the thing? Yeah, they just slap. Like, you can imagine picking two countries that hate each other and just going, right, here we go. This is the gold medal mm. match we've all been waiting for. An old would you do, face slap. Would, would you make that amateur or would you allow professionals in? I don't think it would matter. I think no. anyone, professional amateur, just getting a good face well, slap. The only, who's a professional slapper? Um, Will Smith. Yeah. Sauna and Pogo Lego. Oh, the, the sauna world. <laughs> they used to have a world champ sauna, you know. We talked like about died. that before. He died. Yeah. But he died breaking the world record, so. Mm. Fair. I reckon if I, okay, let's say jump in your head. This is probably, all right, one for both of you. Jonesy, you get 10 years back, so you re- 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 rewind the clock 10 years. Yep. Um, you have to make it in one sport and you get unlimited budget and time. And Sam, you also have to now make it, starting from now, in another sport and you just have to make it to the Olympics. It's got to be an individual event because I want all the accolades. I don't want to be sharing it. I don't want to be in a real layer. I I think at this stage, biggest can't be choosers. You just need to get to the Olympics. Uh, I go for a – oh, I don't know. I was going to say I'd go for a skill-based sport. But I think that would no almost be harder. You yeah. got to start skill based sport when you're four. Yeah, exactly. Four. That's tough. You go in rowing, aren't you? Eight. I'm going the Cox. <laughs> you could make it as a Cox, maybe. You're going know. as an engine room and a rower. Just sit down and. One shooting. Know. I've always been good at like Buck Hunter, you know, at the mm. pubs. And yeah. you'd be good at three aside basketball, actually. Nah, no, nah, we're not Olympic good though. No, nah, not Olympic good. Because that's a sport good. where people really are good. Mm. Yeah, you need the height. But you don't. Do you need to be Olympic good, or do you, do you just need the best in your country to be able to go? Yeah, good point. I think shooting. <laughs> I, I could have done it in shooting. You know what I'm doing? I'm changing my path. I'm getting. I'm leaning into my Greek heritage and yeah. going to Greece and going that going that route. There's no way I'm taking on New Zealanders for genuine sports. So the rumour was well, Poggy just... didn't do the Olympics because his missus didn't get selected for uh, Slovenia. She's number one ranked rider and that. And he it's... said, uh, I'm out. It's I the rumour, but we'll never, we'll never know. That would be a petty reason not to go. I doubt it. I very much doubt it. 
I think oh, it's which... part of it, but I think ultimately he's just fucking tired. Yeah. Pinned. He just needed a breather. Yeah. And he's also probably been chatting to George, and George got in his ear and said, mate, Olympics don't make shit. Why are you even thinking yeah. about it? It's not even right. clinical. No, nah, right. that's not my that's not my takeaway from I do love the Olympics. It's just No, nah, I know. You know. I, I think I think I think well, I certainly share the same sentiment in some ways. Yeah. Just, but it's just how, the, the the nature of the beast. How do you reckon the closing ceremony will go? I was just thinking that. I think they've got to have it back inside a stadium, yeah? Yeah, surely. And they're, they're not going to do what they did with the intro. Nah. They'll dumb I'll it be, down a bit. Yeah, yeah. It'll go old school. Because then no you've got the by... handover. Who's, who, where's the next Olympics? America. Los Angeles. LA. Yeah. 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 Um, Brizzy. I'll be 38. I wonder if I'm too old. For LA? What, to yeah. start your new sport or try to go cycling again? No, I'll try to go cycling and then I'll go to Brizzy for um, something else. Well, you, you might... The you you really. could be the flag bearer because that would be your third Olympics, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's yeah, usually... but pretty, pretty un, unremarkable Olympics, so... <laughs> 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 and Tokyo, also, I think Tokyo soured me. I mean, just Tokyo, just like fucking bad taste in my mouth. Tokyo. You got sick. You got real sick, eh? I got sick. I had a rash. I was also mm. just in the middle of nowhere. It was room. Just, it must have been a strange games. It was a strange games. We weren't allowed to talk to anybody. COVID, yeah. was a COVID thing. It was just it's not sort of the experience you're after. Rio was a good time, except everyone was worried about having Zika babies. Yeah, true. That's right. They come up with something every time. Like R- yeah. Rio was mugging and Zika. Uh, Tokyo was COVID. Paris is um, pickpocketing and death and um, dirty river. Bugs. Dirty river. So that's LA. an interesting one, actually. Like the so the triathlons tomorrow. The men's triathlons tomorrow. Oh, on they're going oh, to big ups to Hay- This will be out too late, but I'm massively behind Hayden Wild. Yeah. Yeah. But are they are they going to delay it? You reckon, Jonesy? Because the, the river's filthy, eh? Well, they're saying here two days. But right. I'm thinking, how do you clean up a river like that? What do they just got a thousand just guys with like those pool skewers? Well, they they did it before the games, and they had got they got the levels down to the safe levels, and then they said they blamed it on the rain when it pissed with rain over the first couple of days. But I, I don't even know how you clean that water up. What are you throwing? No, you just let it run out. You just you just let it flush through. It's just it's just flooding, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Chuck a but, whole um, bunch of salt in there. Yeah. If you're an athlete, though, like I know for me, like say you're peaking for a one day event, and then you get told, "But well, it's actually two days later." It's quite. It's not easy. It's quite yeah. a hard thing to navigate. Yes. But I guess everyone's in the same boat. But then you got to go for a hit out, and you got to. But you, it'd be okay if you knew, but I'd say, oh, maybe two days. So then what do you do? Do you do a long ride to keep yourself a bit of endurance stimulus or do you, oh, maybe it's going to be tomorrow, so I need to be fresh. It's quite mm. a hard thing to... It'd be it'd be yeah. really hard to manage it. And like, undoubtedly, somebody will get it wrong, mm. I reckon, the run-in. Sure. I think Hayden Wild is one of our, our biggest medal hopes. I think biggest, yeah, but biggest gold medal hopes. Yeah, biggest well. gold medal hopes. Yeah. Quite funny, I was I was standing in my lounge chair the other day and I just heard like the doors was open, it's really hot. And I just hear like the most distinct Kiwi accent you've ever heard. And then uh put the head out the window, see these like just the most like New Zealand, Australian. You can just tell them, you just tell in a European country when a New Zealand or an Aussie's there. I don't know mm-hmm. what it is. Turns That's out their world. trainers, they're all staying up here and they're in the neighborhood, they're all the whole they do the whole camp up here in Andorra. And also, like, um, quite a few New Zealand athletes were here. The Sam, mm. Sam, uh, the Tanner. 1500-meter runner. Yeah. Tanner. Sam Tanner. Um, a lot of lot of people have been up here doing the build-up. Yeah. You could have rented out your shack that you're not staying in. Could have got a few euro on the side. Yeah. They I wanted went. Wi-Fi. They wanted Wi-Fi, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, um, this hotel we're at, oh, this bird situation. We oh, walked into the hotel room one day. So we walk in, we're staying up and like it's pretty hot in the up at the top in the Pickmire Hotel. I was like, I'll leave the windows open, we go down and start our day at home. We walk back into the room at night and we're like looking on the bed and there's like this bird shit on or the shit on the bed, like little like looks like mouse shit. 
yeah. we're like looking at it. you think this looks like bird shit we're looking around and we look at each other and then we notice this like bird shit all over the floor and oh, then we just no. look up and there's this fucking big black crow just staring at us <laughs> in the room what'd you and, do like, tried to talk to it like a dog come on boy at it <laughs> did it work nah Eventually, I like keep trying to throw towels on it, but like I don't want to hurt it. But like, what is it about a crow that's just like I just once I eventually like fifteen minutes later, this crow just flying at us, attacking us, and eventually get it outside. But then there's just this weird like crows and death and like mm. this mm. very like oh my god, I don't feel good about. It. I'm not a superstitious cat. guy, mm. but very black cat vibes from that crow. People don't really. People generally don't relate crows to happiness and. And, no. uh, and a good memory, do they? Yeah. It's like um those doves, you know, they're like peace and unity and that. I saw a video on my feed oh, a couple of days ago. Someone let go two doves at a wedding, but it was right next to a freeway and let the doves out and it just flew off in a truck, just <laughs> cleaned it up. And everyone at the wedding was like gutted. So it went from this big symbol of love and unity and the dove just went straight for it. Bang, ground bread. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no. we, we, we had a bat fly in our room at the Tour de France one year maybe me and Joachim oh, yeah? bat got through oh man I shit myself Joachim oh, yeah, had to get bat. out yeah no, rabies yeah, it was horrible yeah. and they can't see either they're just like fucking flying around they're trying to work out Jones's shape for fucking <laughs> sonar and he's just this <laughs> athlete coming at it <laughs> <laughs> that's it uh, good stuff, boys. All right, so we're having a slab of uh, Australia's on uh, the medal count, Australia versus New Zealand. Yeah. No, uh, you, you'll, you'll piss me. No, let's go per capita, though. Yeah, per, per capita. New Zealand's favourite stat, per capita. Oh, yeah? What's that? Divide it by four. Divide it by population. <laughs> yeah, so what, what's Divide New Zealand? Divide by four. Yeah, but what's <laughs> New Zealand's population? Uh, he's actually got a point, because we're five million in New Zealand. Oh, yeah, similar. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, so we're 30. So divide by six. Hmm. Yeah. All right. I reckon we're going to get about 18 medals. So is it medals or is it like gold? Medals. Bronze? We've got a cup. We're going to win the women's. We're going to win women's sevens. We're going to win triathlon. Don't know how Aussies, the Aussies are the women's sevens favourites, aren't they? Yeah. Nah, they won they? the men. Oh, France won the men's. So. Yeah, no. Um, um, yeah. I feel like I our track boys have got some options. Yeah. I think we, we'll probably we'll be one of the favourites for the Madison, one of the favourites for the Omnium. Uh, the women's team, pursuit team, would probably be heads-on favourite now. Um, now that Katie Archibald's out of the Olympics for the Brits. So they'll be, right. be close to favourites. Let's do it. And, and I think in the Olympics, I think our, our two road race riders have got as good a chance as anybody. And the way that that probably. race is going to go... Yeah. I think those Lawrence and Corbin have got as good a chance of anybody at meddling. I think Sam Gaze is a real shot for a medal in the mountain bike today. Oh, that's today. Shit. Yeah. Good day of watching. Hayden Wild for sure. What time's uh, that? This is all we real too late this by the time this comes out. So the, so the handicaps divide by four then? Because you've yeah. got... Oh, there'll, be, there'll, there'll, be a, there'll be a per capita table out there somewhere after the games. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. Good stuff, I think 18, 18 will be a stretch, so I reckon we'll be more like 14 or something. Yeah. All right. Are you, Aussies will kill us in terms of just raw metal count, but that's how it always goes. All right. We'll look at the per capita. We'll post yeah. it on the socials. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Good to have you back, GB. Uh, don't say good to be here, but, you know, <laughs> let's see what happens. Let's, let's wait and see how the next part of the season goes, and might, maybe I'll go to ground again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, good stuff. Oh, we'll get you back on in November. Yeah. Yeah, for those live Christmas specials. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. All right. See ya. Good show, guys. Thanks for listening, everybody. Like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe.